Hey, what's going on guys? So in this video, I'm going to give you three different options or three services where you can host your full stack applications or your backend APIs or applications. And all of these options offer a free tier. So you don't have to enter credit card info or anything like that. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because I'm sure a lot of you have heard that Heroku has stopped offering their free tier, or at least they're going to stop, I believe, November 28th. And if you don't know what Heroku is, it's a, a platform as a service where you can host Node.js uh, apps and APIs, uh, Python, Golang, Rust, pretty much any modern stack or any modern language uh, you can use Heroku for. And it's a great service. I'm keeping my paid account, but I know that a lot of people like the free tiers because it gives you an opportunity to test things out. Um, it's also good for like small projects or if you have uh, a specific project that you want to host just to show like an employer or something like that. I think those are good cases for, for free hosting. If you have an actual uh, project, an actual application that, you know, you're building a business around and, or something like that, you should definitely pay for your hosting. But the free tier does come in handy for uh, for a lot of different situations. All right. So basically what I want to do is give you three direct competitors or direct alternatives um, because you do have a lot of options out there I mean you could use like cloud hosting such as DigitalOcean or Linode but those aren't really direct alternatives to Heroku Heroku is something where you could just push your app to and it just works you don't have to go in and set up set up like nginx and firewalls and all that stuff um, so I wanted to give you some some services that are very very similar um, we also have free hosting at like Netlify and Vercel and those companies are great. You know, I talk about them all the time. I use them, but they're more for front end applications, static websites, um, serverless, you know, serverless apps, things like that. If you have a pure back end service or a full stack app, then something like Heroku can be very helpful. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at them. I'm also I'm going to talk about the services and the free tiers, and then I'm going to show you how to deploy a Node.js API to each one. So we're going to do three different deployments um, just to show you how to do it and, and, you know, what's involved. And it's really easy. All three of them, you can just sign up with GitHub and basically choose your, your repo. And that's it. I mean, obviously, if it's a larger application, you have a database and stuff, it's going to be a little bit more complicated but all three of them are really easy to use, really easy uh, interfaces. And this video is not um, sponsored by any company or anything like that. I just wanted to throw some options out there for you. I did make a tweet last night asking people, you know, what do they think as far as alternatives for Heroku? And it got a lot of responses. So I'll put that tweet in the description if you want to check that out. All right, so that's it. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, like I said, I want to show you the different services, but also show you how to deploy an app or an API to each one. So what I'm going to use is this vanilla node rest API, which is actually from a video I did about two years ago where I showed you how to create a rest API using Node.js, but not using any frameworks like Express or anything like that. So I thought it was a good project to use just because it's so simple and there's very little dependencies. All right, so we'll do that after we just take a look at what's offered. So the first one is Render. This is at Render.com, and, and Render is pretty popular. I'm sure a lot of you, you have heard of it, um, but basically you can deploy Node.js apps, Python. You can use Docker. You can use GraphQL. Um, you can create programs with Rust and, and Golang. So basically any modern stack, any modern environment and language. And if we look at pricing, um, they used to only offer, I'm pretty sure they only offered static sites uh, as a free tier in the past, but now you can, you can create web services and full stack applications, uh, Postgres databases, Redis cache services. And if we click on see pricing plans, you'll see that they have this free tier, uh, offers 5, 512 megabytes of RAM. And if we click on this with limits link, what it does is it explains that um, just like Heroku, if you have 15 minutes of inactivity, you know, for your app or your API, then it spins down. And then what happens is if someone comes to the URL and, and they send a request, then it spins back up and that can take, as it says here, up to 30 seconds. All right. So that's kind of the downside of using the free tier. But if you're just using it for like, 
um, something you built and you want to show an employer or something like that or just testing or you know as a hobby I think that's fine uh, and then it says the free plan allows for 750 hours of running time per month across all free web services so it's a pretty generous free tier I think it's very very comparable to Heroku all right so that is render the next one is railway which is seems very simple again I'm going to show you how to deploy to all three of these and if we scroll down here you'll see you can use just about any stack and, and technology in fact they have these these templates so if you wanted like for instance a Django website it, it's basically one click deploy for a Django uh, with a, a Postgres database if you want an Express and Mongoose app or API or a Discord bot or if you want to use Kotlin or Laravel there's all these different templates that you can use which is really cool um, so as far as pricing goes basically when you pay you pay like a fraction of a cent per minute or whatever and they give you up to five dollars or 500 hours in terms of, of resources all right so whichever one you hit first and then you you start to pay um, but no credit card needed or anything like that you just sign up you get 512 megabytes of RAM just like with render you get one gigabyte disk space um, community support 100 gigabyte outbound network bandwidth so pretty cool for for a free tier um, and then the, the last one I want to show you is cyclic this is cyclic.sh and I'm pretty sure that this is just JavaScript apps just full stack JavaScript no JS um, and they actually directly compare themselves with Heroku so you can click here and you can see kind of you know you can compare and contrast that them with uh, with Heroku service so uh, and they, I don't think they do any spin down or anything like that and as far as pricing goes pretty generous right here free forever uh, three apps you can have a hundred thousand API requests uh, one gigabyte runtime memory 512 temporary storage um, so three cron tasks per app you have a seven day log retention so that's the free forever plan all right so I think any one of these are a great alternative to Heroku's free tier so now what I want to do is show you how we can deploy our API and it's going to be very simple for all three of them we can just sign in with github and basically push our repository so I'm going to sign into render I'm going to use github you can also use GitLab and Google and then you have the option to deploy a static site a web service which is what we're doing but you have Postgres databases Redis cache I'm going to click new web service and it should just automatically show my repositories and I want this right here vanilla node rest API so I'm going to click connect and then I'm going to put a name in here I've already done this so I'm just going to choose node API and then right here where it says start command I don't want to use node index.js if we go to my projects uh, package.json you'll see we could use either node server.js or npm start so let's just change that to uh, to npm start all right and then the free tier is selected and then we can just click create web service and that should do it um, it does take like three or four minutes usually so um, I'm just going to pause the video and I'll be back when this is done all right guys so this is all set and you can see the servers running and I have my domain name right here so I'm just going to open that in a new tab and since I'm on the home route it just says route not found please use API slash products endpoint so if I go to slash API slash products we should just see a, a JSON array of products so very very simple API obviously you know you're probably going to have something that is bigger than this but I just wanted to give you some kind of uh, some kind of example all right so that is now deployed and over here you have um, you know you have your your events so if we look at events deployed live so anytime you push to your github repo you should see this update and then you have your logs you have your environment variables if you want to add any of those your metrics so you can see your usage scaling so if you want to scale up from the free tier obviously you just add your uh, payment information so really cool and really easy so now let's try railway I'm going to go ahead and just log in again with github 
and this interface is very very simple I might even have a project here um, looks like I do so we're gonna say new project and you can deploy from a template remember I showed you all those different templates you can provision a po uh, Postgres S uh, Postgres database or uh, Redis cache database MongoDB etc I'm just gonna say deploy from github repo and just search for let's say vanilla uh, where is it vanilla node rest API and if you wanted to add some environment variables you could do that we're gonna say deploy now and this might just take uh, a couple minutes okay so that took about 20 seconds or so so I'm gonna click on this success right here and let's see it says server running and if we go to settings down here under domains you can add a custom domain obviously you'd, you'd most likely do that if this were a real project but you can also generate a domain so I'm gonna do that and now I have this domain here if we go and we visit it um, one moment you deploy okay so it's just gonna take a few more seconds I believe there we go all right so same thing route not found which is just that's what it's supposed to do for this API so we'll go to slash API slash products and there we go all right so that's our second deployment now we're gonna go to cyclic and let's sign in and continue with github and down here we have these different templates if we want to create um, a vanilla node.js API which is actually what we're deploying an express API database Next.js. So this is all but JavaScript stuff. You have front end um, templates. So React, Vue, Svelte, a Slack bot. So I'm going to click on link your own and then I'm going to search for my vanilla node REST API and choose that. And let's click connect. And this goes very quick. This should only be like uh, five seconds or so. Maybe. No, there we go so you're live and down here so this is just telling me I have this environment variable node env I can ignore that um, this should work so I'm going to click on the domain here and we should see that message and if I go to slash API slash products there we go we have our list of products okay so very very simple all three of these services I think they're directly comparable to uh, to Heroku. So if you need a free tier solution for either a full stack app or a back end API or application, I think any of these three, uh, any of these three is a good choice. So that's it. Hopefully you guys can find this useful and I will see you next time.